So this is Funk's my name. Welcome to part three. In part one and two, we drew and rigged this just with some basic bones. Now we're just going to fix up the actual smart bone side of things to make it work a lot better. And this is where some of some of the magic happens, where it actually becomes a lot of fun. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up my actions in fact don't even need to really look at that you might do because you're not using Ramon's um, shortcut keys which I use you've got smart bone shortcut keys or we've got the bone the modified bone tool these are all available on the normal lost marble forum just do a little search and what will happen uh, this lets you select multiple bones or single bones and then it will let you create a morph for that bone. I've got this on a um, keyboard shortcut anyway so you you may get confused but just ha keep a look um, down here and it, when it goes purple it means I'm in a smart bone action if you ever get confused. Um, so first thing I'll do, might as well do the thumb, so I select the thumb, create the first um, action for it and I know this one's not really going to need much in betweening so well it doesn't matter let's start it down here at second six frame 144 this is arbitrary but I'm just turning it slightly to the left and we're going to fix this little nick here so and maybe fix a bit there so what I need to do is I've turned it left I go now to the thumb tip layer and then I just correct this I do love the way this works so um, now I correct corrected that you see that that's working and if you want to add well I need to do the same thing on the other thumb tip now as the thumb is stretching outwards you can actually stretch this a little bit as well if you wanted to so now you see actual almost muscle movement really just going to do the same thing here which is really cool okay so now I'm going to press my shortcut key again I know I'm not, I have to go back up to the um, skeleton and then I've still got it selected, press it again, goes to B4 space 2. If you're doing this manually, the bone is called B4, you just create a new one called B4 2, but I'm in the editor now, so I'm going to rotate this all the way down here and I'm going to start correcting this here and you can change the curvature, you can change the line thickness, you can change the positioning of anything you want. So let's see, that looks pretty good. I think that will do for now. So in this case we want this to be squashed out a little bit. So now it's squeezing the pad a little bit as it moves. I forgot to change the thickness of this on frame zero on this layer earlier, so I'm just going to do that now. And I can delete the changes to the thickness. There we go. What I might do is just change this here. And I'll do the same thing to the one that is on the back. So now sometimes there's an issue with redrawing the canvas. You just have to move the timeline and it gets sorted out. So no big deal. If you ever get confused where you're doing something and it looks like the bone's in the wrong direction or whatever, just flick this around and it should fix everything for you. Okay. So go back to the main line. Now we see oh, that 
Alright. What am I doing here? Let's take this thumb's working quite nicely now. In fact, I'm not that happy with the way it is at frame zero on this side, so I'm just going to change that. Now these lines that you see here don't actually get rendered, it's just when you've got something on thickness zero, it shows up, but when you actually render it, it doesn't show up, so that's fine. Let's carry on doing the same thing for all the different bones. So that's not too bad actually. What I might do is I'll create for it and then in this direction what I'm gonna do is just make the pad oops squeeze up a bit like that now if you need to for reference put the frame zero position I'll show this in another video but if you want to line things up when they're moving you can put the um, onion skinning on and then you can line it up so maybe I should really make it quite extreme like this I don't know. Maybe this doesn't actually need to move quite so much. So you see there's a lot of trial and error with this. But uh Maybe it's better if it's like this on frame zero. So now I'll just change it here. So I've got the red line as being frame zero, the green line as being frame one four four. So I'm putting this in between the two. I think that will probably do for now, won't it? I can also correct this so it follows the hand. I need to do the same thing on this palm. Which actually, because it goes behind the hand, it's not really an issue. But what I might do is, as this goes down here, I take the back palm, I'll just change this curvature a little bit so it looks like there's some muscle movement there. Okay. So I'm just going to carry on doing the same thing with the rest of the fingers. You can stop watching now if you uh, want to skip to the next lesson. But I'll leave it going just in case you're interested. The thing is that I really think it's worth the effort of doing this 
um, because you only need to do it once and once it's done this is what I was saying earlier if you move it back to the position it was in frame zero then it won't look like the base of the finger is rotating um, now I've done this on frame one because I know it's such a small movement it doesn't really need the in-betweens but I'll move it here anyway just so I can show you now you see that the fingers moving but its base isn't I'm just going to do that to all the other fingers in fact I might need to do it in the opposite direction for this finger so I'm going to move it in that direction if you alt click on a layer it will go to it automatically so you don't have to fiddle over here and then Alt right click. I don't know if I said that before. That's the printer in the background. I'm going nuts. Now, I'm not doing this uh, on the back layer because these bits are hidden anyway when you're on this back layer here so it's not really that important I'm using, um, I've got a shortcut J to go up to the parent layer. That's, uh, uh, that's a script which, uh, I'll remember the name of the, it's Rileman script, which you will be able to find on the forum as well. So finally let's do the arm and then we'll stop this lesson. I need to select this hand. Turn it one way and then the arm is what needs to be changed here. So, turn onion skinning off. Should now. Oh, what's happened here? This is moving that finger weird. Let's have a look what's going on here. This is the combination of this moving this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to not affect these points based on this finger because they're getting moved by this finger anyway. So 
So I'll just select these points here. And get rid of their keyframes. Oops, just these ones. So because this has gone on quite a while, I'm going to add the, I'm going to add the, um, the actual smart bones that aren't, that, that's more of a control bone for pointing the fingers in the next lesson. But I think it's working pretty good at this point. So see you then.